Chicago Cubs are on the air. How you doing, everybody? Welcome once again to Major League Baseball. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux here with you at Olympic Stadium in Montreal in the final meeting of the year between the Cubs and the Expos. And the way things have been going, all I can say to that is thank heavens it's the last time. Because we've dropped seven in a row to this ball club, which, of course, is the hottest team right now in the National League, if not the hottest team in the majors. They not only have won 11 straight here at their home ballpark, and that's a record for a Montreal ball club, but home and road, the Expos have captured 15 out of 16 decisions. Not too bad. And that's one of the reasons, of course, that while they are half game behind the Pirates in the Eastern Division race, percentage-wise, they are ahead of Pittsburgh. Tonight, they have the left-hander, Bill Lee, who was rescued by Montreal from Boston after last season, and he has won 15 and lost 10 this year, including five straight wins. And against him is going to be the Cubs stopper, Rick Russell, who tonight seeks his 18th win of the season. He is 2-2 two and two against Montreal this year. Lee, on the other hand, has shut out the Cubs in one ball game, and in the other one, he allowed one run to capture a 2-1 to one victory. So he is 2-0, and oh, and comes off a complete uh, game pitching performance against the Cardinals. He was freezing to a shutout victory in the ninth inning, and finally yielded a couple of runs in the ninth, but he still uh, went all the way and won it handily by a score of 7-2. to two. That was last Saturday, Lee's last start. Rick Russell, on the other hand, is also coming off a victory. He beat the Phillies in his last outing. That was Sunday. And went all the way there. He was uh, in one of those rocking chair jobs at Wrigley Field Sunday. You fans will remember that. As the Cubs lambasted the Phillies by a margin of 15 to 2. Since then, things have not gone too, uh, too well. Herman Franks with uh, Barry Foot still out with a bad back. Mike Vale with a... Uh, bruised hand. Bill Buckner still suffering from a hamstring as uh, putting a ball club out there that on paper at least certainly is not the most formidable, formidable looking team you could have. Steve Onaveris is playing but he's still uh, handicapped considerably by full groin muscle and no longer has that maneuverability that a third baseman ought to have. But you got to play the game and leading off of the Cubs tonight will be Miguel DeLaunay. And Yvonne De Jesus hitting in the number two spot. DeLaunay, by the way, will be in center field. Larry Bittner will be at first base hitting third. And Dave Kingman tonight in the cleanup position. Last night they had him, had him hitting third. Steve Onaveris batting fifth. Jerry Martin will be in right field. And Martin is hitting sixth. Tim Blackwell doing the catching. Mick Kelleher at second. And Rick Russell on the hill. For Montreal and Dick Williams, Red Hot Expos, Warren Cromarty. Again, leading off will be in left field, and Davey Cash hitting second, Cash at second base. Andre Dawson in center field, Dawson hitting third, with Tony Perez over at first base, batting in the cleanup position. He drove in the winning run last night as the Expos rallied to win that ball game and handed Bruce Sitter his sixth loss of the year. Gary Carter will be behind the plate, Carter hitting fifth, Ellis Valentine in right field, Valentine batting sixth. Larry Perry. Could be a very strong candidate for the National League Most Valuable Player Award. Will be at third base. He has homered in each one of the first three games of this series. And Rodney Scott at shortstop. Scott hitting in the number eight slot. He'll be followed by Bill Lee. Free soul, left-handed pitcher. And the crowd as they take their positions on the field. Miguel DeLaunay getting set to lead off against the colorful left-hander Bill Lee. A veteran who has spent some nine years over in the American League. This is his first season in the National, and he's enjoying it right in the thick of a pennant race. And he's captured five straight decisions. His earned run average is a glittering 3.03. Has three shutouts in his 15 wins this year, and one of those three at the expense of the Cubs. First time these two ball clubs met this year. Things didn't turn out so well. Rick Russell was a starting pitcher. Ross Grimsley, who was then in the regular starting rotation for Montreal, shut the Cubs out two to nothing. That was up here at Olympic Stadium. They captured that series two out of three. With Glenn McLaughlin getting the one win for the Cubs. 
But earlier in the season, the Cubs were having pretty good luck. When they got him down to Rigby Field early this year, they beat him three out of three and then came up here, or four out of four, rather. But uh, things have not turned out so well in the last uh, seven meetings between them. Elon A. been a bat 20 times since the Cubs got him, proud of the Oakland organization. The little fellow has five hits. One run batted in and incredible speed on the bases. Lee into the windup of the first pitch of the ball game. He takes it high. We're underway at Olympic Stadium. Lee is not the kind of a guy who's going to overpower many hitters. He delivers a fastball and is in there for a strike. He's big enough to do it. Stands about 6'3", a little over 200 pounds. Veteran, 32 years of age. Winds, delivers, and a swing and a base hit. Pulls one through the hole on the left side. And Steve Bond or, will be stepping in now with Dylan A on at first base with a single between Parrish and Scott. Dylan A has been the only Cub who's been su- successful at stealing bases this year. He's 12 and 3 since the Cubs got him. De Jesus has worked hard at it, but he has not been successful pilfering bases. Got 19, but he's been thrown out 20 times. But as a hitter, Maintained a good batting average. He steps in hitting 275 for the year. Driven in 51 runs with five homers. And the first pick from Lee is a strike. Lee normally has excellent control. He'll average just under two walks for every nine innings of work. But he does not get a lot of strikeouts. And the ball a little bit outside. Ball one, strike one. Looks like they were looking for a hit and run. Joe Malpatano coaching the third and Cookie Rojas in the coach's box at first base. Working behind the plate today, rookie umpire, Fred Brocklander. With Paul Rungi at first, Engel a second, and John McSherry at third. Lee looking right at first base. Steps and throws. Just a lollipop over there that time. Two of the ball clubs in the National League are idle today. Cincinnati and Houston contending for the Western Division Championship are using this as a travel day out to the West Coast. A little faster throw to first base that time by Lee, but DeLanay did not have a big lead. Valentine playing to Jesus, swing late. He's kind of guarding that right field line. Dawson, medium depth, straightaway center field. Now the pitch, deal and it goes. DeJesus on the hit, run, swings, lines, one of Alcott, and look out. That's going to be a double play. Deal and A is standing on second base. Valentine makes the catch, wheels the throw back to first base. Well, whether he never heard the crack of the bat as he took off on the hit and run, but he paid no attention whatsoever to what was happening. Not a very happy start. Double play, number 108 for the Expos. The bases are empty. Bittner stepping in, hitting 307. He's done an excellent job. Three homers and 45 runs batted in. Left hander takes, and the first pitch from Lee is a ball. Larry, four for 13 up here and driven in four runs. Fastball to him, and he takes it inside at the belt. Two and oh. 45 RBIs with 63 base hits. He looks in there. The ball too low. Three and oh. Well, let's see if he can keep the inning alive by coaxing a walk of this man who normally has such fine control. Big left-hander winds and Bittner will take. There's a strike at the letters. Last ball, three and one. Dave Kingman in the on-deck circle. Lee winds, three-one pitch. Ball four. He lost him. And it keeps first inning alive. Dave stepping in, hitting 290. 45 home runs. Leads the National League in homers. Matter of fact, leads all the baseball in homers because Norman Thomas of the Milwaukee Brewers leads the American League. He has 40 home runs. And Dave leads the National League in runs batted in with 106. Three more than Dave Winfield and four more than Mike Schmidt of the Phillies. John Baylor, of course, of the Angels. 
Leads the majors in RBIs. Baylor with 131. Got a lock on that title. Dave's complaining about the batter's box. That it's short. They've got an awfully wide white stripe extending out uh, from the batter's box a few feet down the third and first baseline. And the same thing on the dirt at first and third. Now well, he plants himself. Looks like that front foot is well out in front of the plate. Very wide stance. And he swings and a drive into left field. It's going to be in for a base hit. But Bittner will have to stop at second base on a double to left field. Throwing got away from the cutoff man, but it was retrieved by Bill Lee over in foul territory in the third base side. I'm sorry. Kingman with that line single into left, and Bittner stopping at second base. Second hit of the inning. The dealing A took off for second base on the hit and run of the Jesus up. And Yvonne lined out to Valentine. Fairly a shallow right field. He was playing him perfectly. And DeLanay never took a look at all to see what was happening on it. When Valentine made the catch. DeLanay was standing on second base. Steve Oliver is stepping in. Hitting 295 for the year with four homers and 50 runs batted in. He swings at a ground ball to the second baseman Cash. He's got it. Tosses to Scott for the fourth out on Kingman. Up with two singles and a walk. No runs. Leave two men on. We move to the bottom of the first inning. No score. General Finance, friendly Bob Adams. Bob, it's Bruce Russell, and I'm ready to go with an auto loan. Good. We'll be happy to arrange it. You know, Bob, a lot of guys buy on impulse, but I shop around, you know. Well, you should. A car is an important decision. Took my time, gave it a lot of thought, and I know exactly what I want. What are you getting? I'm getting the two-tone headrest, ashtrays, front and back, and fully upholstered trunk. I meant what kind of car are you buying? Bob, next time you see me, I'll be driving a sporty DeSoto runabout. Bruce, I don't think they make that car anymore. My second choice is the ever-popular Packard Coupe. Bruce, I hate to say this, but... uh, Hubmobile? No. Broadway Limited? That's a train. Well, let me look through this World's Fair catalog again. Pierce Arrow, Nash Rose... When you need financial assistance, General Finance has a plan to fit your needs. Now's a good time to call the friendly folks at General Finance. They've got the professional know-how to put together a plan that's just right for you. Two Evansville offices call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at four. 476-4926. That's 476-4926. This is Jerry Black asking you to please become involved in Big Brothers and Big Sisters. There are now a hundred children waiting for someone like you. I found out that I could not change the world, but I'm now making the world a little better for one little guy. We are growing and learning together, and I'll let you know, friend, I now have a good start on changing the future, because my little brother is part of that future. Please call me at 425-6076. That's 425-6076. Thank you. Warren Cromarty hitting 286. Leading off, a left-hander with eight homers and 44 runs batted in. He's had good success against Russell so far this year. Rick Gehring, an earned run average of 3.34 into this action. 17 and 9 for the year. Lifetime record against the Expos 14 wins, 9 defeats. Big fella delivers. Cromarty takes the first pitch of ball. Cromarty in the series, 3 for 11. Here's the windup of the pitch. Swung on, a base hit into left field. He continues to have good success against Rick. Pitch was up a little bit and he lined it. Trying to Kingman and left to open up. The bottom of the first inning. That'll bring up Davy Cash, who in this series has wrapped out six hits in 12 at bat and driven in three runs. Languished on the bench until about a month or so ago. He was used primarily as a pinch hitter, and he did well in that uh, role. But since Fire was hurt, he moved Scott to shortstop, brought in Davy to play second, and he has been a very, very hot hitter. Takes the first pitch of ball. Veteran right-hander with a very close stance. He's hitting 357 with 11 runs batted in. He swings on the hit and run and bounces it foul. Down to Ozzy Virtual coaching at third. In front of the Cup dugout, the level of the count at 101. 
Andre Dawson in the on-deck circle. Felipe Lu coaching at first base as usual. Bittner at first for the Cubs. Gallagher again at second base. DeJesus at short. Nadavares at third. With Tim Blackwell doing the catching. Barry Foote still out with a bad back. Here's the pitch. Curve and he misses low into the dirt. Blackwell blocks it. Cromarty does not try to advance. Ball two, strike one. Dave Kingman in left field. Jerry Martin in right. And DeLanne in center. Victimized. Top of the inning on the bases. Is a stretch the pitch. Cash swings, fouls it back out of play. Two two on him. From here, the Cubs fly down to Philadelphia to meet the Phillies in a battle now for the number four spot in the Eastern Division. Be there for three games over the weekend: Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. And no baseball on Monday. Two two pitch. Swung on and missed by Cash. So there's one gone as Russell posts his 117th strikeout of the season. Here's Andre Dawson hitting 275. 22 home runs for this big right hander. And 83 runs batted in. Tony Perez moves out into the on deck circle. Promarty still on at first base. Russell ready and now fires over to Bittner at first. Promarty back to standing. We will have a doubleheader against the New York Mets Tuesday evening at Chase Stadium. There's a delivery. And he takes a fastball for a strike. 0 and 1 now. And then the next night, a Twin Night doubleheader at St. Louis. The Expos are going to have back-to-back double getters. This. There goes the runner on a hit and run, and a bouncing ball on the third base side. Out of Harris charges in. He's got it. Pegs to first base. And they've got Dawson while Cromarty advances to second. Second time. They've tried to hit and run. First time, Cash fouled the pitch. This time, Dawson gets Cromarty into scoring position, and here is Tony Perez. That's a game-winning hit last night. Runner and extremely popular, getting a big hand here at Montreal. Hitting 281. 13 homers. And the two runs batted in last night give Perez 69 for the year. He takes, and it's a strike call. He has not had good success against Rick so far this year. No score. Runner at second base, two gone. First inning, here's the delivery. Swung on, a miss. Fastball down and in on Tony. You can see him doing some welding on that building that is going up. That will uh, be the anchor for the umbrella kind of uh, roof that they plan to put on here eventually. They're working around the clock. There's a slow curve, swung on, a miss. Perez chased one and he looked like he missed it by about two feet so the side is retired with no damage done despite a lead off single and we go to the second inning the Cubs coming to bat no score hello general finance friendly Bob Adams speaking hi Bob is it true that you can arrange a loan for any good reason well yes generally well is love a good reason uh who is this let me put it this way I really don't need it but I told him I was in the store to buy it I don't think I understand. Are you talking about love? Oh, no, in the wardrobe. I know. I don't understand. Bob, he's the store manager, and I really came in to sneak a peek at him. Oh, he's so beautiful. I think I'm really in love with him. Oh, I see. Well, when he asked, can I help you, I just blurted out I want a new one. A new what? That's what he asked. So I said everything. Everything? A whole new wardrobe. Oh, now I get it. That's what he expects me to do. So is it all right, Bob? Is what all right? A loan for love. We can just say it's a loan for a new wardrobe. Oh, thanks, Bob. Thanks for the help. You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Two Evansville offices call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 476-4926. That's 476-4926. A public service message on behalf of the U.S. Olympic Committee. In some countries, the clash of fencing swords is as familiar as the smashing of shoulder pads is to us. 
When we get together with those countries in 1980 for the Olympic Games, however, none of the events will be football. Instead, Americans will be competing in fencing and other sports that are comparatively unfamiliar. And serious training requires money. Support our athletes through Olympic Dover Mass 02030. That's Olympic Dover Mass 02030. Without your help, we can't afford to win. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here with you. Uh, wish we were going to be able to attend. The affair that's going to be honoring the great Johnny Kerr on Sunday. Start at 10.30 in the morning at the Holiday Inn up in Evanston, Illinois on Sherman Avenue. Jim Durham is going to be the general chairman of that one as Johnny receives the Sportsman of the Year Award from the B'nai B'rith Council of Greater Chicago. Great organization. Gary Martin stepping in, and he takes the first pitch of ball. Martin won it in 10 at-bats in this series. Batting average of 281. Now for the right-hander, there's a swing and a drive down the left field line. Good go for extra bases. He makes the turn. Cromarty wheels the throw into second base, and it's a long single down the left field line. Cromarty getting to it in a hurry and getting that throw in right on the money. Well, that's Gary's second hit up here in this series. upset earlier today because he said he just has not done a thing with the bat against the Expos this year. Delaunay opened opened up the ball game with a single into left field. Then on the hit and run to Jesus, lined out to Valentine and Delaunay with a dead duck. He was at second base when the ball was caught. There's a swing and a drive into left field. Cromartie coming in, claps it all. Martin, look out. He gets into second base barely. Gary had to hold up to see whether or not Cromartie was going to make the catch as Blackwell teed off in the first pitch and hit a line single in front of the left fielder, Cromartie. So the Cubs have runners at first and second with nobody out. Russell, a good hitter, Kelleher might sacrifice. Let's get him around one way or another, huh? We sure haven't been very successful at it lately. Kelleher... 90 at bats for the year with 24 hits, a 267 average, a little right hander, and eight runs batted in. Doesn't have any homers. Leaf into the stretch. The left hander's pitch, Gallagher's going to butt, and he fouls it over on the line with a plate in third base. If you'd like to attend uh, that affair Sunday morning, jot down his phone number, make a phone call tomorrow. 263. 4053. 263-4053. Martin is second and Blackwell at first. With nobody out. Cubs with four hits so far off Bill Lee, but no runs. Left-hander's pitch, Keller scores away. And he fouls that one. Boy, he was in perfect uh, position. The lay down a bunt, but he just couldn't uh, get it up in front of the plate. He's questioning Brocklander about something. I don't know whether Carter Lou might have interfered he, with him. He was it. close to it. He was coming out in front of the plate, but Brocklander said, no, the ball hit the glove. Not the bat, but Keller is still questioning the ball. He's not buying Brocklander's call on it. But now, he's really going to have to bear down to get those runners along. Count on him, but nothing in two. There's a swing. He tries to go to right field and is a little late. Piles it into the seats down the first base side. One of the problems with Cubs lately, when you've had men, a man will say at second base with nobody out, with one out, nobody's been able to get him over to third. And we haven't been able, been able to bring him in from third base with less than two out. 0 2 pitch. That's a ball too high. We it. One and two. They are having quite a problem over at Pittsburgh tonight in the scheduled game between the Pirates and the Cardinals. Very, very heavy rain is hit over there. And it's been held up. Both teams do have a common off date later on this month. 1 2 pitch. That's a ball too high. And the Cardinals are due in here for a doubleheader against these Expos tomorrow. 
but on the 27th of this month, both Pittsburgh and the Cardinals are idle. But you can be sure they'll wait a long time tonight in Pittsburgh to try to get it in. 2-2 delivery to Kelleher. That's the ball. Put it outside, it's 3-2 and two now. And the crowd growing. Cub runners at first and second, top of the second inning. And no score here at Olympic Stadium. Let's see what Mick can do to get those men along. Maybe even bring somebody in. Russell in the on-deck circle as Bill Lee into the stretch delivers. They go. And a swing and a little foul pop-up. Tony Perez and Gary Carter giving chase. Look out. Carter goes sliding into their dugout. It is on the same level as the warning track and the rest of the field. They made a tremendously fine effort. He grabbed that ball as he went sliding in and gets a fine hand from the crowd. Couldn't quite get to it. Let's pause here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WBML and WBML-FM, Boonville, Indiana. Call 897-0346, R.H. McCain Incorporated, Old Rockport Road, for Gibson Appliances, Armstrong Central Air and Heat Systems. They service what they sell. R.H. McCain Incorporated, Old Rockport Road. The last time. Lee checks Martin at second, and he was ready to fire a ball over there, but nobody was covering, neither Cash nor Scott had moved. On at first is Blackwell. Now the left hander is ready. Kelleher swings and he fouls that one out of play into the seats on the line with home and third. So he's battling Lee. We got his last win over the Cubs. On the 4th of July at Wrigley Field, he beat Bill Cottle 2-1. to one. And Russell got a victory over Montreal the next day in the 5th, defeating young Scott Sanderson. But since then, it's been all Montreal. 3-2 pitch, they go again. And a little half swing, and he rolls one to the shortstop. Scott goes to second, and no relay throw. Scott to Davy Cash for the force out. On Tim Blackwell, all of it sliding in. No relay by Cash. Kelleher on a check swing. Rolled one out on that carpet to Rodney. Advancing to third is Martin and Rick Russell stepping in. And he would love to get himself a base hit or at least a sacrifice fly. Give himself the lead in the ballgame. There's 11 hits this year. Driven in three runs. His batting average for the season, 153. One away, first pitch. And Lee misses low, ball one. The threshold's victory over him at Wrigley Field in the early part of July. Montreal has beaten the Cubs 7 to 5, 6 to 4, 4 to 3, 1 to nothing, 8 to 6. 3-2, to two, and 6-3. to three. one no pitch. They swing at a bouncing ball down the third baseman, and Parrish grabs it, but in foul territory. <laughs> and Carter and Martin lock uh, one another in an embrace as Jerry started up the line, tried to put on the brakes. No hard collision. That he was trying to come in on that bouncing ball to the third baseman, Parrish. And Russell walking slowly back up into the batter's box. He studies the side of a Mount Patano before he moves back slowly into the batter's box. Trouble tonight trying for his 18th win of the year. And I sure hope he's going to wind up with at least 20 wins this season. Here's the wind up in the pitch by Lee, and a liner to the second base, but look out! Through the first body! Holy mackerel! the batter Russell to Davy Cash, the second baseman, fired quickly back to Perez. Kelleher was out on a very close play. The first two men reached, but the Cubs come up empty. And at the end of one and a half, no score. 
General Finance, friendly Bob Adams speaking. Buenos dias, Roberto. Buenos dias to you, uh... Al Dobson here, monsieur. Oh, hello, Al. Getting ready for another foreign vacation, huh? Yeah, old, my hair. And we'll need another vacation loan, si vous play. Consider it done, mon ami. Where are you going this year, Al? We're going around the world, Buona. Really? Kumalak Bumachang. I beg your pardon? In Estonia, that means my bed has no mattress. Uh-huh. Well, sounds like a big trip, Al. 67 cities, amigo. You've got to tell me about it when you get back. That'll be next Thursday, Bob. You're taking three days to go around the world? Yeah, the two-day trip was booked. And besides, Martha doesn't like to be rushed. Well, see everything you can. Not likely, Bob. Our longest stop is nine minutes in the Kuala Lumpur airport. Can you rush that vacation loan, Bob? Sure. Thanks, Sahib. It's okay. You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Listen, if you only had nine minutes in Kuala Lumpur, what would you see first, Bob? Two Evansville offices called General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. Uh, hello, uh, Public Library? Yeah, this is Bob Newhart. Uh, who discovered zinc? Uh, uh, what was the population of New Guinea as of 1970? Uh-huh. Well, uh, thank you very much. You know, it's incredible how much information you can give me off the top of your head. You're, you're regular Einstein. Einstein. Albert Einstein. Well, uh, don't worry, you, you can't know everything. A public service message from the Indiana Library and Trustee Associations. A very wide stance in the batter's box. Russell's first pitch. Strike call and a breaking ball to Carter. He's three for nine in the series. The run batted in on his 21st homer of the year. Hitting 274 with 68 runs batted in. Russell delivers. Misses inside of the fastball. One of one. Philadelphia playing at New York tonight. And the crowd beginning that staccato applause. Russell, next one. A pass ball misses inside to Carter right at the knees. Ball two, strike one. Boy, oh boy. Two one delivery. Swung on. It's a ground ball to the left of Oliver. Steve is up with it, and the peg is on target to Bittner. Carter is out of there. Russell chain speeds on him. That'll bring up Valentine. Ellis hitting 281. 21 homers, the same as Carter. 77 runs batted in. Two in this series. And he's four for 11. Well, I know Lou Kelleher was very anxious to get going. Just wish he'd waited until that ball got by cash. Well, when everything's going for you, such as it is for Montreal, those things happen in your yeah, favor. Sure do. And when you're going lousy, the way the Cubs are, they go against you. First pitch is a strike to Valentine. Russell's next one. Turns it over, and it's low and outside. Ball one, strike one. Kingman pretty deep in left field and retreats a couple more steps now. 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on, he hits a ground ball to DeJesus right. Yvonne is up with it. Here's the peg. He's out easily. Two gone. Grounder to short. He is the two men. Bounce out down the Bears. One to the shortstop. And he struck out two. Larry Parrish getting a tremendous hand. Trotter has really come into his own this year. Steps in, batting 313. He homered last night. He homered in each game of the Twilight doubleheader the night before, giving him 25 home runs for the season. Starts him out with a curve that didn't catch the inside corner. In too close. Parrish about 6'3", a little over 200 pounds. 1-0 pitch. Well hit into center field, but DeLanne comes on and he grabs it to retire the side. A low line drive to DeLanne in center field, and it's three up and three down at the end of two, no score. General Finance, Bob Adams. Is this friendly Bobby, baby? Uh, yes. Sheldon Post sacking it to you, Bob. You all right, Mr. Post? Like, yeah, just doing my bag, Bob. You're what? 
Or is it, uh, hold on, insurance is my bag, music is my thing. Yeah, I make that doing my thing, Bob. What thing is that? Groovy sounds from the tuba, Bob. You play a tuba. Well, my son talked me into going out and doing gigs with his combo, see? Gigs? Yeah, that's musicians talk for a booking. I know. Well, I need a loan for a station wagon, Bob. For the tuba? Right, and the speakers, too. Speakers on a tuba? Only electric tuba in town, Bob, and it's a real blast. I <laughs> Get it, blast? Mm-hmm. You see, that's musicians. I talk. know. Well, about the bread for the station wagon, you can always get a little help from a friend the general finance. What does bread have to do with anything, Bob? Well, you see, bread... Bob, I'm going to be a musician, not a baker. Yes, but you see... Come on, Bob, get with it. Bread? Bread? Two Evansville locations call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. <laughs> Join hands with care to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. We can help make it a better place for all the children. Join hands with people everywhere. Each of us can do our share in Cares Crusade for Children. Send your check or money order to Care Crusade for Children Overseas, 208 South LaSalle Street, Chicago 60604. The crowd was held down because the game was telecast nationally in Canada. Tonight they don't have that television, and we've got another very fine crowd on hand. As this ball club now has drawn over a million seven hundred thousand for the year, and they are hopeful of cracking the two million mark, but they don't have many home dates left. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux, Lou, come on in. Let's see if we can get a few things going right for us. Playing events. Here's Delane opening up the third inning for the Cubs. The left-hander's first pitch, fastball, high ball one. Delaney singled to open up this ball game. Cubs have four hits in the first two innings. Sandwich in with a walk, but yet there's no score. The defense has certainly helped Montreal not lead. The alert defense has two double plays, one in the first, one in the second, to close out a cover alley in each inning. The pitch, Delaney takes high, and it's now ball three. 3 and 0. Lee working quickly. Here's the pitch. There's a strike called. He has all the pitches. Fastball, sliders. He lets up on every pitch. Good motion and good control. 3 and 1 pitch. High. Ball 4. So, once again, as in the first two innings, the leadoff hitter reaches first base. That's the second walk given up by Lee. In two complete innings, and the one man here in the third, he only has walked 41 men before this ball game. Within two innings, it's 41 men in 194 and two thirds innings, and only one intentional. Delaney with a lead at first base. Here's De Jesus. Throw to first base. Delaney gets back safely. Delaney was doubled up in the first inning on a hit and run when De Jesus lined to Valentine. The stretch by Lee, throw to first, and Delaney has to dive back to get back safely. No score in the third inning. Final appearance for the Cubs in Montreal. Tonight, Cubs lead for Philadelphia. Hopefully, Fredericks doesn't Interfere. There goes the runner. Here's a fake punt. Carter's throw to second. He is in time. They get Delaney as he sprawled over second base. Looks up at angle. Doesn't say anything, but he's thrown out. Carter with a very fine throw to Scott. And for Delaney, that is only the fourth time that he is caught stealing. One out now, and to Jesus with a count of ball one. The pitch on its way, let up outside. Now the count is one and one. Let me correct that first pitch was a strike. One ball, one strike to the Jesus. Pitch by Lee. Fastball, strike call. Don't throw many fastballs, but he got that one past Yvonne. Now the count is one and two. Outfielders are shallow. 
The pitch by Lee. Curveball, it's high, stayed outside. Two and two the count. He's having more trouble with the curveball in the let-up tonight than the fastball. He's only thrown about three fastballs. Ball two, strike two. The pitch on its way to the Jesus. There's the fastball, swing a line drive. Pass Parrish down the line. This should be extra bases. De Jesus rounds first, goes in the second with a double. A double down the left field line by De Jesus, his 25th double of the season. That is the fifth hit off Lee. And unlike last night when the Cubs broke three bats in the first inning, blooping base hits to the outfield off Rogers. Every one of the five hits tonight have been hit well. But yet, Cubs haven't dented the plate. Now here's Bittner at bat. He walked in the first inning. Carter out having a few words with his pitcher, Lee. Now Bittner steps in the batter's box. De Jesus with the lead at second base. Lee taking a lot of time while looking back at the Aces. Now gets his sign from Carter into the stretch. Still looking back at the Aces. Still looking back, and then he steps back off the pitching rubber to drive Aces a few steps toward second base. No one is holding the Aces close to the bag at the present time. The Aces with a lead. He's on the carpet. Now the stretch by Lee. Here's the pitch to Bittner, sidearm, curveball low, ball one. Scott in a normal position, as is Cash, the second baseman. So De Jesus has a tremendous lead at second. Now here's the pitch to Bittner. Fastball swing, ground ball into center field for a base hit. De Jesus will score. Cash tried to backhand the ball, but missed it by about two feet. That's what Dick Williams was mentioning on the leadoff man show. Is he's willing to give a little bit of defense around second base to have Cash's experience and bat in the lineup. So Bittner drives in his 46th run of the season. The Cubs have taken a one to nothing lead. One run, six hits. Now for the Cubs. Now here's King with a bat. Shot a single to left field. First time up. Bittner, short lead at first. Lee is ready. The pitch outside, ball one to Kingman. Kingman steps out of that batter's box. Now taps that bat in front of the plate. Lee is ready. One ball pitch is a let up and a swing and a miss. Good motion with that one, and Kingman is out in front of that curveball. The shift is not on. Cash is only about three strides to the first base side of second base. Scott and Parrish, of course, playing Kingman as a full hitter. Dawson is just merely shading Kingman into left center. Valentine in straightaway right field. Here's the pitch by Lee. Fastball a swing. He reached out, hit that ball into center field. Dawson is there, playing it perfectly, and he has it for the out. So they're keeping the ball away from Kingman. And hopefully Dave and the Cubs, hoping that Lee would make a mistake. Here's out of Harris. Went after the first pitch in the first inning and forced Kingman at second base to close out the inning. Now he's batting with one run in. Cubs leading one to nothing. Bitter on first. Two outs. The South Paul Lee is ready. Here's the first pitch, a fastball outside, ball one. Lee looks in, gets his side. Bidner with a short lead. 
Bill Atkinson, curveball artist, was starting to warm up. Here's a let-up for a strike. Conavera's taking it all away. Atkinson brought up from their minor league club, good curveball pitcher, starting to warm up in the Expos bullpen. Lee sets the pitch, let up. Swinging a fly ball to center field. Dawson coming in. He's under it. He has it for the out. Third inning, one run, two hits, one man left on base. Expos come to bat. Third inning, Cubs lead one to nothing. Hello, General Finance. Friendly Bob Adams speaking. Hi, Bob. It's Dan Pollock. Who? I'm in showbiz. I thought you might know the name. No, sorry, I don't. Uh... Anyway, I'm calling about a loan. You run up a lot of costs preparing for your showbiz, you know? Right. Well, we can take care of all those bills with the consolidation loan, Stan. Oh, great. See, I started with a correspondence course in impressions. Judy, Judy, Judy. You know who that is? No. Neither did anybody else, Bob. Then, at magician school, I lost $140 worth of rabbits in one day. Wow, I've really got some bills, Bob. Well, that's what a consolidation loan's for. I was going to give up showbiz, Bob, till I discovered comedian school. Now I'm ready to roll them under the aisles. Well, lots of luck. I made my debut in 30 seconds. Great. I'm going to wow them with that story about the talking penguin and the bubble dance. I see. Have you heard that one, Bob? No, I haven't. Darn, I can't remember it either. Could you ask around the office, Bob? Why not? After all, you can always... Always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Two Evansville offices called General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 476-4926. That's 476-4926. Hello, this is Jim Pritchett of TV's The Doctors. Playing a physician, I've treated many patients, but none of the show's dramatic problems can compare with the real-life suffering of children around the world. Many of these youngsters are in desperate need of basic medical care, which you can help bring them by supporting UNICEF health projects during 1979, the International Year of the Child. Please write to UNICEF, United Nations 10017. Rodney Scott will lead off the third inning for the Expos. Scott is hitting 229. He has three home runs, 38 RBI. Cubs lead one and nothing. Now Brushel pitches a shutout. He's got a victory. First pitch is outside to Scott. Ball one. Russell works quickly. The pitch is a strike called on Scott. Andreveras has moved in at third base just in case Scott attempts to bunt. One and one pitch. Swing and a one hopper to of Ferris. He has it. Long throw to first is in time. Scott hit the ball well, and fortunately for Anna Ferris, he moved back with two strikes on Scott. Now here's Lee hitting 206. He has 13 hits. The most on the Expo staff insofar as base hits for pitchers. He has four RBIs. Left-handed hitter. Swing a line drive to Jesus sleeps and makes the catch. Hit right at De Jesus, about four or five feet over De Jesus' head, and he leaped and made the catch. Now here's the man with the only hit off of Russell, Gromardi, who led off the ball game in the last of the first inning with a base hit. Now he's batting with two outs in the third inning with the Cubs leading one to nothing. St. Louis at Pittsburgh, that game still held up because of rain. Russell has his side. The pitch on its way. Curve ball, he checks his swing. They ask for the appeal. McSherry says he did it okay. Held back. Ball one. Marty with quite a squat there as he levels that bat over the plate and swing in a line drive with one hopper to Keller he has it throws the first for the out in the third inning the Expos go down one two three at the end of three Cubs one Expos nothing General Finance Bob Adams speaking friendly Bob Adams yes uh, this is Mary Jo King's husband Bob who you haven't heard of Mary Jo? Don't think so. Could you refresh my memory? Well, did I mention she's my wife? Uh-huh. It didn't help. Does bicycle do anything for you? Bicycle. How about flaming hoop? We're still talking about your wife? 
Yes, Mary Jo is a stunt cyclist, Bob. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, we put on a little show Sunday afternoons behind the house. Made the local papers last month. It was in the sports section. Isn't that interesting? Oh, we get 25, 30 people out here on a Sunday afternoon. Terrific. For our town sesquicentennial, Mary Jo is going to ride a high wire between the house and the bicycle shop. Wow. It's a benefit show for the local police. Wonderful. Could we put a poster in your office window? You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Oh, and Bob. Mm Mm-hmm. Can I also get a loan to build the bicycle shop? To Evansville offices, call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large home. Homeowner's loan at 476-4926. That's 476-4926. Did a salesman ever come to your house, you know, a door-to-door salesman knocks on the door, sells you something, and you bought something, and the very next day you knew you'd made a mistake? Well, did you know that on most door-to-door sales costing $25 or more, you must be given three days to cancel? I mean, that's the law. Three days to cancel. You don't even have to give a reason. It's your right to change your mind. Three days to cancel. The Federal Trade Commission thought you'd want to know. Lee will face Martin, and then Blackwell and Kelleher. It is still pouring in uh, Pittsburgh. They've held up that ball game now for, well, it'll be an hour and about ten minutes. Lee's first pitch. To Martin, ball one outside. The wind up in the pitch. Swing and a ground ball to shortstop. Scott has it. Straightens up, fires the first just to get Martin for the out. One out, and here's Blackwell. Blackwell singled into left field in the second inning. Blackwell, switch hitter, hitting. Right-handed against Lee. Lee coming back from a three and no count on Martin to retire him on a ground ball of the shortstop. Lee into the windup. Here's the first pitch to Tim. Fastball swing, ground ball into the hole, into left field for a base hit. Blackwell now two for two tonight. That's the seventh hit off Lee, and now here is Mickey Kelleher at bat with one out. Blackwell has yet to steal a base. Let's see what Herman Franks has in mind to move him around. Kelleher at the plate, levels the bat over the plate. Lee sets. Here's the pitch. Fastball for a strike right down the middle. Expos at double play depth around second and short. Lee shakes off one sign with a flip of the glove. Here's the pitch. Fastball, low ball one, strike one to Keller. Keller stepping out of the batter's box. Don't know whether Amalfitano called him out or not, so the hit and run may be on here. Lee has a sign, goes into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. Outside. Ball two, strike one. Two and one. Now the count on Mickey. He forced Blackwell at second base in the second inning. The two and one pitch. Instead, he throws the first and Blackwell is back safely. Cubs lead one and nothing. We're in the fourth inning. Now Lee steps once again, looks directly at Blackwell. Here's the pitch to Kelleher, swing and a miss. It's two and two on Mickey. St. Louis at Pittsburgh, that game held up because of a hard driving rain. Now the count of two and two on Kelleher. The stretch, the pitch, curveball, swing and a foul ball down the right field line. Ball two and strike two. Kelleher moving up close to that plate. Levels the bat over the plate. Stretch by Lee. The pitch. 
swing and a line drive foul as Perez leaped for the ball right at first base. Didn't have time enough to get off the bag and did not touch it. And it sliced foul into the bullpen down the right field line. Ball two, strike two to count as Kelleher battling Lee now at the plate. Blackwell on first, one out. The stretch. The pitch. Curveball, pop foul, back of the plate, out of play. Once again, Atkinson starts warming up down the right field line. So Williams does not want this ball game to get out of hand. Did not remove Rogers last night when the Cubs scored three runs in the first inning. But Lee struggling here. And we're in the fourth inning. The pitch on its way. Kelleher swings, lines that ball to Lee, who catches it, throws to Perez for the out. A line drive. Had the glove been on the other hand, it would have been in center field for a base hit. There is the third double play of the evening, so Lee is living quite a clean life out there tonight. No runs in the fourth. Expos come to bat, Cubs lead one to nothing. General Finance, friendly Bob Adams. Hi, Bob. Dave Rooney here. Dave. You know, old Mr. Easy Touch. Oh, the railroad conductor who loaned money to the people who forgot their wallets, right? Right, but I got a new job. Oh, great, because that last job... Well, the thing is, is, I'm going to need another consolidation loan, Bob. Fine, Dave. I have all kinds of bills starting to pile up. Well, a consolidation loan will turn them into one monthly payment. Fantastic. What's your new job, Dave? Hmm? What's your new job? I'm a collector on a toll gate, Bob. Dave. No, no, I... You're not lending quarters... Well... And dimes... Vacations... And nickels... I I got an IOU from every one of them, Bob. I'll get to work on your consolidation loan, Dave. Thanks, Bob. And if you ever drive through my toll gate without your wallet... Thanks, Dave. And you can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Now's a good time to call the friendly folks at General Finance. They've got the professional know-how to put together a plan that's just right for you. To Evansville offices, call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. You're sending a letter across country, or maybe a packet across town. Well, if you slip and forget the right tip, you just might slow it down. Check your address, get everything down. Make sure that there's nothing you skipped. Package or letter going near or far. Slip up your mail with the right tip. Oh, travel better in a letter with the right tip. Dave Cash will lead the fourth inning off for the Expos. He struck out first time against Rick. As Rick was getting to deliver, time was called at the plate. Comes with a one nothing lead. The pitch by Rick, fastball inside, ball one. It'll be Cash, Dawson, and Perez here in the fourth inning. The pitch. Outside, ball two to Dave. Russell looks in, gets a sign from Blackwell. Here's the kick, here's the pitch. There's a strike call. Two and one to count. Rick going after his 18th victory of the season. The pitch. Fastball, a swing, a high ball, deep in the left field. Kingman going back, going back. Kiss off the wall. base of the wall at the 375 foot marker. A double for Dave. His eighth since returning to the lineup. That's the second hit of Russell. Now here's Dawson at bat. Dawson grounded out to Antavirus. First time at bat. Austin, right hander hitter, levels that bat over the plate. Russell set. Check cash. Here's the pitch. Curve ball inside. Ball one to Dawson. They have 
Senate fever here in Montreal, I'm Dan. Papers, radio, everybody you talk to, curveball, swing, fair ball. Down the third base line. Cash will score the tying run. Dawson is on second base with a double. Dawson's 84th RBI. And for Dawson, that's his 21st double of the year. So back-to-back doubles have tied up this ball game very quickly here in the fourth inning. Here's Perez. Struck out in the first inning. Dawson now on second base. Just changed places with Cash. The pitch is a fastball inside. Ball one. They're all tied up one to one. Russell set. The pitch. Curve ball for a strike. Call. One and one to count on Perez. Perez. That familiar stance. Levels the battle over the plate. Russell gets his sign. Checks Dawson at second base. Now the pitch. Curve ball swing and a ground ball to Bittner who makes a fine play on a one hopper as Perez. Going to right field, advances Dawson the third. One out, and Carter the hitter. The veteran Perez, going to right field, advances his teammate to third with one out. Blackwell having a chat with Rick as to how to pitch to Carter. Comes infield, the right side, the first baseman, the second baseman, in on the edge, if it was an infield draft. But they're close. The Jesus is halfway. Montaveras is halfway. Russell into the stretch. First pitch to Carter. Fastball, brushes him back away from the plate. Ball one. playing to Carter's strength to the left side of the infield. Right side is in close. Russell is ready. Here's the ball one pitch. Curve ball swing a line drive. Made hit to left field. Carter rounds first. He's going to go for two. Carter rounds second. He's going to go for three. Here's the throw to the Hatsu. The dive. He's safe. the third and with a diving slide gets a triple and he drives in Dawson with a lead run that puts Montreal in the lead two to one but Carter is still on third with one out for Valentine Cubs in field halfway one out Russell now takes this windup. Here's the pitch. Curve ball, swing, ground ball to Bittner. Here comes Carter. The throw to the plate. He is out. He's out at the plate. As Valentine reaches first, Bittner almost hesitated as he was going to touch first. Had he went to first base, Carter would have scored. But he then he decided to cut off the runner coming in at the plate, and he threw to Blackwell, who made the tag on Carter for the second out. Valentine is safe at first on the fielder's choice. Now with two out, here's Perry at bat. Valentine on first base. His lead is to the carpet. Here's the first pitch. Fastball high, ball one to Perry. Perry lined out the Delaney in center field in the second inning. Expos have taken a two-to-one lead in the fourth inning. One ball pitch. On, there goes Valentine, and he stops. Comes back as the ball almost hit. Parrish moved him back out of the batter's box. Ball two and no strikes. Russell might have hurried his pitch that time as Valentine gave a fake bluff as if to steal second. 
Darrell, the stretch by Russell. He throws over to first base. Pittner puts the tag on Valentine too late. Valentine had to dive back to first. Russell once again now gets his side. And now Perry steps out of the batter's box to be sure that Valentine is ready at first base. Now we're set. Valentine has his lead. Russell into the stretch. The pitch. High. Fastball, ball two, no strikes. The Perry. The stretch. The pitch. Swing, a ground ball, a shortstop. The Aces has it. Tosses it to Kelleher. And we have a force out at second base. But in the fourth inning, two runs. Three hits, two doubles, and a triple. And the Expos have taken the lead at the end of four, two to one. What are you going to do in Indiana on 10 gallons a day? An active trip. Like shoving off from the dock or a day on a rock. How about a race with the clock? Would you take an overnight hike? I'd rather take a trip on a bike. How about a day of horseback riding? Before or after scuba diving? It wouldn't take much driving. In Indiana. On 10 gallons a day. What a trip. Indiana Department of Commerce, Lieutenant Governor Robert D. Orr, Director. General Finance, Bob Adams speaking. Friendly Bob Adams. Right, who's this? Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. Yeah? What's my secret? Well, I don't know. Bob, we've got ourselves a teeny tiny. What? Little feet going pitter-patter. Oh, well, congratulations, boy or girl. Hey, girl, all girl, Bob. Great, have you named her? Yeah, I think we're going to call her Spot. Spot? Oh, I know it's not her original name, but she's got this big black spot right between her eyes. And why not? So you got a little puppy dog right there. Right, right. Look, I want to refinish the whole basement for her. Paneling, recessed lighting. Isn't that a little much for a puppy? Bob, for my mother-in-law, not the puppy. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant... Doesn't your mother-in-law have a room upstairs? That's where the puppy is going, Bob. I see. She's allergic to dogs. Well, you can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Now, I know, Bob. But what I need right now is a loan. Two Evansville offices call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. Back at Olympic Stadium, Vince Lloyd here with you. And Rick Russell leading off a line into a double play in the second inning to retire the side. The Cubs have lined into three double plays. He swings and a line drive right to the third baseman, Larry Parrish. Hit a bullet right at him. I tell you, Bill Lee is leading a charmed life. He's a very colorful guy. Remember earlier this year when he was jogging to the ballpark just before Montreal came into Chicago for their first uh, journey into Wrigley Field this year, he was hit by a taxi cab. Lives about five miles away from here. Elon A. Stepping in against him. And the little guy takes. It's a strike. He's singled in the first inning. And on the hit and run to Jesus, mine to the right fielder, Valentine. And Elon A. Is all the way at second base. And he was a very easy double play. And he walked and was caught stealing in the third. Takes that pitch a ball. Left-hander in the windup and the delivery. Fastball, it's low, two and one. Lee is negotiating a new contract here at the Expos publicly. Yeah, he's gone to the the fans here in Montreal. To, there's a swing and a base hit. Hit it right over Lee into center field. What do you ask the fans here? You tell me how much I should ask for. What do you think I'm worth? waiting yet for the returns. Well, Miguel, tonight is two for two officially. And here's Ivan de Jesus, lined into that double play in the hit and run, then doubled and scored in the third inning. Came in on Bittner's base hit. They're still waiting out the rain in Pittsburgh. Cardinals and the Pirates. 
May, may wait it out till morning. Step for the throw to first base. Miguel is back in safely. Cardinals come in here for a doubleheader tomorrow evening. One of several the Expos have to face. There goes the runner. He picks the buck, takes, and the throw bounces in and hits DeLanne as he goes sliding in successfully with a stolen base. He had a tremendous jump that time. So he's one and one in stolen bases for the evening. 13 and 4. For the season. Dylan. The Aces helped him out a little bit. Putting the bat out there. Faking the bunt on it. Pitch was in for a strike. It made Carter wait just a little bit before he could get to that ball and fire to second base. Tying run in scoring position with one out. Lee delivers. There's a swing and a well hit drive to Crow Marty in left field. Look out, Dylan A. Get back there. He does. We don't need another double play. That was a well hit line drive. The two two gone. And Bittner, who has a walk and a single and a run batted in, stepping in. Batted in five runs up here in this series. Cubs are getting the hits, but all oh, those runs are so tough to come by. They have out hit the Expos eight to four, but they got back to back doubles and a triple in the bottom of the fourth inning off Rick. Lee will be careful with this batter. Stretch the pitch. Swung on. Line drive over first is in. Here comes DeLanay around third. He's going to score the tying run. Bittner drives in the second run of the night to make it a two-to-two ball game. Line single over the head of the third baseman, Larry Parrish. Man, oh man, is he something. Well, DeLanay, with his single and his stolen base, is able to score on that single to left field. Nine hits by the Cubs. And a tied-up ball game as Dave Kingman steps into the batter's box. Bittner was 65 hits for the year. 47 runs batted in. Got to be the best ratio of anybody in the ball club. RBIs for hits and at-bats. Kingman swung and missed at the first pitch for a strike. Dave singled into left field and then with a one-arm swing hit a drive deep to center field hauled in by Dawson in the third inning. He was pulled by the pitch but he was so strong he was able to get it way out there. Strike one delivery. Swung on and a high deep drive left field. It is off the wall. Here's Bittner on his way to third and Crowmart he's through. He is in there and Kingman goes to second. He just missed getting his 46th home run of the year. Came down hard against the wall. Man, oh man. Ten base hits off Lee, and we're in the fifth inning, tied at two. Guy is really living a charmed life out there. He's going to get a little counsel right now. Jim Brewer, the pitching coach, is out there to talk to him. The reporter was asking Lee here a couple of days ago if he was excited about the race. And he said, what race? He said, well, the pennant race. He says, shucks. He says, I'm still trying to catch up with the human race. Yankees exploded for five runs at Boston tonight at the top of the fourth inning to take a 7-2 to two lead with the Red Sox batting against Ron Guidry in the bottom of the fourth. Guidry going after his 17th one of the year. And so is Mike Torres, but it doesn't look like Torres is going to get it. Another thing he may get tonight is a hasty hook. Otteveris steps in. He swings. Bouncing ball. Grab at the shortstop. Behind second. Throws to first base to retire the side. Again, 
Z one after the first pitch. In the fifth inning, a single, a stolen base, another single, a double, one run scores. But we move to the bottom of the fifth, and it's tied at two. Hello, General Finance, friendly Bob Adams speaking. Before I let him do it, I said I'd call and have you make the arrangements first. Arrangements? For an advanced medical loan. Uh, better make that dental, too. Advanced medical loan? Bob, there's nothing my husband can do outside of our house that won't lead to an accident, so I won't let him do it till I know we can pay the bill. What does he want to do? He wants to get the mail from the mailbox outside the door. Well, that seems safe enough. Bob, guess who went out to tell the newsboy we already got a paper and got run down by the kid's bicycle? Well, I have Guess not. who took the dog out for a walk and fell off the porch? He uh, does seem a little accident prone. Can he arrange the loan? Why not give him one more chance? All right. Open the door, Norman. I reach out your hand to the mailbox. Got the mail? Come Did he back. bring his hand back in? No, I'm bringing your hand. No, it's all right, Bobby. Brought it in. Oh, good. Thanks for the help, Bob. It's all right. You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Two Evansville offices call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. What can you do in Indiana on 10 gallons a day? A natural trip. Like caves and caverns. Campgrounds and battlegrounds. Or mounds. How about a weekend by a covered bridge? Or a sunset from a ridge. Would you run a river? No, but I'd take a kayak up a creek. Wildcat Creek? <laughs> Where else? I'll meet you there. Where? In Indiana. On 10 gallons a day. Hey, it's a natural trip. Indiana Department of Commerce, Lieutenant Governor Robert D. Orr, Director. Out of the fifth inning. The other night, we were talking about a great sports fan in Pittsburgh. Maybe he works for the city over there called Radio Rich because he constantly is listening to sportscasts, baseball, football, basketball games. And there's his playing at a base hit in the left field. Boy, oh, that Rodney Scott has hit a ton against Rick this year. And he just opened up the fifth inning with a single. Radio just called me here a moment ago while... I hope you were listening to that commercial to tell me that because of the torrential rain in Pittsburgh, they have just now called off the game between the Cardinals and the Pirates. It has been postponed. And both of them have an open date Thursday, the 27th of this month. Scott with 33 stolen bases for the year. Dick Williams said he and Larry Parrish have been his most valuable players this year. Billy, the pitcher in the batter's box. Rick into the stretch. Sacrifice situation. He pushes the bat out there and fouls it right out, fouls the ball right out of the bit of Blackwell. Strike one count. Rodney. About third on the ball club in uh, driving in the winning run. One statistic that Dick Williams keeps on his ball club himself is how each individual does in driving in a man from third with less than two out. And it's Rodney Scott who leads the ball club in that category. Ontiveros edging up from third and another peg to first base. Rodney back safely. Cubs with ten hits. Montreal with five. The game is tied at two. Here's a stretch by Rick. And the pitch, he's going to swing. And he chops one to the third base side of the mound. Ontiveros has it. Has only one play. It has the effect of a sacrifice as he took a chopping swing on that ball instead of sacrificing and bounced it right near the mound. Ontiveros, who was anticipating a sacrifice, said to move quickly to his left side. Rodney is in scoring position with one out. Lee will not be credited with the sacrifice. Dick Williams knows that he got the job done. He got that man to second base. Lead run in scoring position, Warren Cromarty. Singled into left field. Bounced out to the second baseman in the third. 
Left-handed hitter, batting 287 for the year. That's up to the moment. Scott at second, the pitch. Romarty swings, gets under it, fouls it back out of play. Jack Minovich, our producer, and Johnny Stubbs, our engineer here at Montreal. He's around a happy assignment of following these Expos when they finish this homestand against St. Louis. They have St. Louis and Pittsburgh. Cardinals, a doubleheader tomorrow. Single game Saturday and Sunday. Then they host the Pirates here Monday and Tuesday. And then they begin a very arduous road trip. And I mean it is a backbreaker. 0-1 delivery. Fastball is high. 1-1 to Cromarty. After completing the homestand Tuesday against the Pirates, they go to New York for back-to-back doubleheaders Wednesday and Thursday. Then three single games at Philadelphia. 1-1 pitch. Breaking pitch. And he fouls it sharply back out of play. It's 1-2. and two. And following that, they have a doubleheader at Pittsburgh. Then two single games against the Pirates. Then on what was to have been an off date, a makeup doubleheader at Atlanta. Then they come home to end the season against the Phillies with three games. No off days. And five doubleheaders, including the one here tomorrow night. Russell's pitch to Cromartie, pulls one to Pitcher's right. Russell off the hill, takes the throw. Rodney Scott going to third on it, but they're two gone. And Davey Cash is going to be the hitter. Before Cash steps in, let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. We're WBNL FM, Boonville, Indiana. Rodney Scott at third base. He's the guy that took the second base job away from Davey in spring training and has held on to it. Except now they've had to move him to shortstop with Spire up. Brought Cash into play. First pitch to him. Missed the outside corner, ball one. Davey struck out in the first inning, then doubled, leading off the fourth, and came in on Dawson's double. After one out, Carter tripled. 1 0 pitch. Right hander swings, ground ball to Kelleher. He's got it at second base. The side is retired. And Rodney Scott is left stranded at the end of five innings of play. We're still tied at two. What can we do in Indiana on 10 gallons a day? A family trip. Like county fairs or a day with the bears? Ooh, or grilling steaks in the open air. How about a drive to Lincoln's home? Mm, the kids would love the Golden Dome. What about a weekend with the muzzle loaders? Isn't that in South Dakota? It's all right here. In Indiana? On 10 gallons a day. Ha! Huh, what a trip! Indiana Department of Commerce, Lieutenant Governor Robert D. Orr, Director. This is WBML, WBML-FM, Boonville, Indiana. R.H. McCain Incorporated is your Gibson appliance dealer. Now on display are Gibson refrigerators, side-by-sides, ranges, washers, dryers, and the famous Gibson window air conditioners. R.H. McCain Incorporated. Call 897-0346. Hello, General Finance, Friendly Bob Adams speaking. Hi, Bob. Is it true that you can arrange a loan for any good reason? Well, yes, generally. Well, is love a good reason? Uh, who is this? Let me put it this way. I really don't need it, but I told him I was in the store to buy it. I don't think I understand. Are you talking about love? Oh, no, a new wardrobe. I know. I don't understand. Bob, he's the store manager, and I really came in to sneak a peek at him. Oh, he's so beautiful. I think I'm really in love with him. Oh, I see. Well, when he asked, can I help you, I just blurted out I want a new one. A new what? That's what he asked. So I said everything. Everything? A whole new wardrobe. Oh, now I get it. That's what he expects me to do. So is it all right, Bob? Is what all right? A loan for love. We can just say it's a loan for a new wardrobe. Oh, thanks, Bob. Thanks for the help. You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. Two Evansville offices call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 476-4926. That's 476-4926. The Cubs have lined into three double plays tonight. Ten base hits off Bill Lee. 
Jerry, one for two. Stepping in, here's the windup. The left-handers, first one, the fastball outside. When the Cubs get back home to host the Pittsburgh Pirates, that's it on in a moment. Ball outside. General admission seats for the Pittsburgh uh, Cup games Saturday and Sunday, September 22nd and 23rd, are going to be sold in advance. They are available to you at the Cub ticket office. They'll be open tomorrow. That's for the Saturday and Sunday games. With the ball outside, general admission seats for those two games are going to be sold in advance. Cubs and the Pirates. 3-0 pitch. That's too high. Ball four. Jerry draws a walk from Lee on four pitches. And again, we're going to get some action very shortly in the Montreal bullpen. Walk number two, issued by Lee tonight. He averages a little bit less than that for every nine innings of work. You can tell he's a little bit off the game. Jim Blackwell has singled twice tonight as a right-handed hitter. Both to left field. Bottom part of the batting order. Lee's first pitch, Blackwell, tries to bunt the fastball, fouls it back out of play. Talking about that very arduous Montreal schedule, they do not have an off day now, rest of the season. The Pirates, rained out against the Cardinals tonight, are also idle tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday, Pittsburgh will host the New York Mets. Then they come in the air to Montreal. Look at first the pitch. Again, he's going to try to buck, but takes the ball low. One and one now. Two game series here. Then the Pirates will be at Philadelphia for a doubleheader the next day and a single game on the 20th. Then come into Chicago Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Then they will be home to Montreal for a doubleheader and then a pair of single games against the Expos. So the two uh, teams that are battling for the Eastern Division Championship head and head right now have five games against one another this season. 1-1 delivery. Blackwell pulls the bat back from another fastball that misses. 2-1 and one on him. Now he's going to check signs to see if they still want him to try to sacrifice with nobody out. Kelleher in the on-deck circle to be followed by Russell. Cubs have 10 hits, Montreal 5, but in the run department we are locked up in a 2-2 tie. Lee delivers, Blackwell pushes the butt of the first base side of Beauty. Picked up by Tony Perez, turns and throws to Davey Cash, covering at first base, a good sacrifice by Kim. But Martin in scoring position. Now you got Mick Kelleher, the eighth man of the batting order, and Rick Russell, the pitcher, due up. So Mick here, a key man. He had a vicious line drive in the fourth inning, right back to Lee. Blackwell was on first base at the time, could not get back, and he was an easy victim of, of a third double play in this ballgame. What was to have been an open date for the Pirates on Thursday the 27th may be filled in with a game against the Cardinals, which was lost tonight because of the torrential downpour that hit Pittsburgh. An off date for both the Cards and the Bucks. Lee's first pitch in Kelleher takes a ball that's low. The crowd groaning a bit. Bill Lee in a bit of a jam, a runner at second. 1-0 pitch. There's a strike right at the knees. Dale Murray doing a little uh, throwing out in the bullpen right now. At the moment, he's not doing any, but he did peg a few of them a little while ago. One out, one one pitch. Swung on, ground ball to the second baseman. Davey Cash to his left is up with it. Pegs it over to Perez, two gone. Mike trying to go to the opposite side. Get one through the hole, but he couldn't do it. Well, if we're going to score, we either need a hit from Rick Russell, an error, or a wild pitch, or a pass ball. Rick has lined out twice to the second baseman and the third baseman, and he's hit two shots against this left-hander, who is so lucky to still be out there in a tied-up ball game. Have to have done everything but drive him to the showers. 
Lee, that first pitch to Rick, misses for a ball. He's working from a windup. With the runner at third and two out, here's the pitch. There's a strike that came in over the outside corner. Here on Saturday the 22nd, there are going to be 15,000 T-shirts, Dave Kingman T-shirts, given away to the first 15,000 fans coming in. Kids, that is. 13 and a under. There's a swing and a foul ball into the seats on the right field side. It's 13 and under with fully paid admission. First 15,000 of them on September the 22nd will be given those Dave Kingman T-shirts. And then on Sunday, the 23rd, it's going to be Fan Appreciation Day. All kinds of goodies. World Series tickets. Trip for two to Hawaii. An automobile. One-two pitch. Swung on. Grab ball off the glove of the pitcher. Cash charging in. Russell running hard. He legs it out in the throw. Dropped by Perez over there. So the Cubs take the lead on Rick Russell's single. Off the glove of the pitcher, Bill Lee, that caromed over to Davey Cash. He couldn't get to it in time. Russell is on with a base hit, the Cubs 11th, and he has just given himself the lead by batting in his fourth run of the year. That big guy can really run, and he needed every ounce of it that time. Every ounce of speed, I should say. Take your time, Rick. Walk slowly back. Puts on the windbreaker. That's going to be all for Bill Lee, who leaves here having given up 11 base hits and only three runs. He had won five in a row coming into the night's action. While Dale Murray warms up, we have a delay of a sick time out for these messages. My pussycat doesn't smoke. My puppy dog doesn't smoke. My hamsters don't smoke. Are animals smarter than people? Could be. Fact is, smoke is hazardous to smokers and non-smokers as well. If you don't have a pet, take a tip from your lung association. You can live better without cigarettes. Quitting is tough. Lung illness is tougher. Write to your lung association for free information. They offer this public service message because they care about every breath you take. It's a great way of life, a great way of life, Air Force, Air Force. It's a great way of life, a great way of life. Think of all the great things you can do, and get the chance to serve your country too. Air Force needs people, people like you. There's a new dawn waiting, waiting for you. Air Force ROTC could lead to the dawning of a new day for you. By attending a college that offers Air Force ROTC and participating in the program, you'll be earning your commission in the United States Air Force while you earn your degree. Your high school guidance counselor has the details on how to apply and which schools participate. Check it out today. Air Force ROTC, gateway to a great way of life. Air Force. It's a great way of life, a great way of life. Air Force, Air Force, it's a great way of life. Dale Murray used to be with the Expos, then he went to uh, New York, and they just got this big right-hander, a sinker ball artist, to recently to bolster their cry for the Eastern Division Championship in this, their 10th year in the league. Cup's familiar with him, of course. Murray with the Expos has only been in two games and has one save. Has not yet allowed an earned run. While he was with the Mets, he had four saves in 58 ball games, and he won four and lost eight with New York. The Mets tonight, by the way, are trailing the Phillies one to nothing at New York in the bottom of the fourth inning. Steve Carlton going for the Phillies in that ball game. There goes Russell on the first pitch, and a fake to second base. The big guy, hoping to catch him by surprise, is caught stealing. On the first pitch thrown by Dale Murray in relief, and that retires aside. Well, it was a good uh, 
a bit of strategy, and it worked all right. Tell you, it was pretty close. Adil and A will lead off the seventh inning when the Cubs come to bat then. But here in the sixth, they have taken the lead. It all started with a walk to Jerry Martin. And Russell drove him in eventually with two out. So we move to the bottom of the sixth, and the Cubs are leading the Expos 3-2. to two. General Finance, Bob Adams. Is this friendly Bobby, baby? Uh, yes. Sheldon Post, socking it to you, Bob. You all right, Mr. Post? Like, yeah, just doing my bag, Bob. Your what? Or is it, uh, hold on, insurance is my bag, music is my thing. Yeah, make that doing my thing, Bob. What thing is that? Groovy sounds from the tuba, Bob. You play a tuba. Well, my son talked me into going out and doing gigs with his combo, see? Gigs? Yeah, that's musicians talk for a booking. I know. Well, I need a loan for a station wagon, Bob. For the tuba? Right, and the speakers, too. Speakers on a tuba? Only electric tuba in town, Bob, and it's a real blast. <laughs> get it, blast? Mm-hmm. You see, that's musicians. I know. Bob. Well, about the bread for the station wagon, you can always get a little help from a friend. The general finance. What does bread have to do with anything, Bob? Well, you see, bread... Bob, I'm going to be a musician, not a baker. Yes, but you see... Come on, Bob, get with it. Bread? Bread? Two Evansville locations call General Finance to borrow up to $10,000 or for a large homeowner's loan at 424-2976. That's 424-2976. The three, four, and five men in the Expo's batting order will be facing Rick here in the sixth inning. Dawson doubled, drove in cash in the fourth, and then Andre scored on Carter's triple. He is one for two tonight. And has driven in 84 runs for the year. Sports a 276 batting average. Baltimore leading Toronto 9-1 to one at the end of five. They have scored three different innings tonight, the Orioles have. And in each one of them, they have scored three runs or in a rut. Second inning, Eddie Murray got a three-run homer. His 23rd home run this year for Murray. Census homered with a man on, and Kelly homered with nobody on. Pat Kelly is a swing and a ground ball to Bittner's right. He's got it. And Russell wheeling off that mound in a hurry. Good fielding pitcher. And Dawson is out of it. Bittner handles that glove exceptionally well at first base. He's not afraid to die for a ball. One to the dirt board or whatever. And his teammates are all very high in praise of Larry and his defensive ability at first base. Tony Perez stepping in, of course, has drawn plaudits for many years for his prowess, not only with the glove, but at the bat. Tonight he has struck out and grounded out to Bittner, who made a fine play to get Tony in the fourth inning. Russell delivers. Breaking ball for a strike. Ain't going to take a look at that one. Cubs have a young first baseman playing at their double-A farm club at Midland, Texas. Randy Hundley managed down there this year. His name is Jim Tracy. He's a 1-0 delivery. Swung on, a ground ball. The aces deep in the hole. Bob of it. Long throw to Bittner. He's got Perez. The aces rifled one from what would be the edge of the outfield grass deep in the hole at shortstop. Jim Tracy. The Midland Cubs won the Texas League batting title. Young man hit 355. Then they had Carl Fagel, who was the MVP at Wichita in the American Association. Led the... Uh, he hit over 300. Fagel did. Led the association in homers. Runs batted in. But then that uh, suffered a broken hand while he was still at Wichita. I didn't realize it was broken. It was hurting him. Joined the Cubs and got the bat one time as the pinch hitter struck out. And he told them his hand was hurting. They took him, had an x-ray made and uh, found out it was broken. He's back home in Arizona. Fagel, primarily a first baseman, has played the outfield. Jim Tracy the Texas League betting champion. He is also a first baseman. We're getting loaded with them, aren't we? Here's the pitch. And Russell down low. All of a sudden, he's been too fine here with Gary Carter and gotten himself in the hole. Right-handed hitter in there with the bases empty, two out. Cubs leading three to two. Rex fastball. That's in there for a strike. 
have nothing to report yet on the Minnesota Twins game at Texas. Kansas City and California are idle. And the White Sox are idle tonight in the American League. Two out, nobody on. Bottom of the six, here's the pitch. Swung on, ground ball, Keller to his left. Mickey's got it. Here's the peg. It is three up and three down on three ground balls. Last six men have gone down their way. At the end of six at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the Cubs come to bat leading three to two. We're back at Montreal's Olympic Stadium, and Miguel DeLanay was in the batter's box with Russell on first in the sixth inning when Dale Murray came on a relief of Lee, and Rick took off for second and was thrown out, officially trying to steal, so Miguel is going to lead off the seventh inning. Yes, Rick trying to steal. Wasn't a bad move, because you still have your leadoff man coming to bat in your next inning for you. And he made it close at second base. And his base hit off the glove of Bill Lee sent Lee to the showers and gave the Cubs the lead. DeLunay, facing Murray, will now bat left-handed. And against Lee, he had two singles, a stolen base and a walk, and he was also caught stealing and was out on the front end of a double play and a hit and run when he took off for second at a drive to the right fielder, Valentine. First pitch from this big, tall right-hander. It's in there for a strike. Delaney goes after that one and fouls it sharply down the third base side. The Cubs with 11 hits, Montreal with five, and the Cubs nursing a one-run lead. Trying to say farewell to this ball club with a victory. Murray Wines, the veteran's next pitch, fastball. He had to jump back out of the way of that one. Houston and Cincinnati using today as a travel date to get out to the coast. Houston will open up a weekend series at San Francisco tomorrow. As a little tap foul down the third base side, Elaine halfway down the right field line at the ball, finally picked up by Parrish in foul territory. Count of one and two. And the Reds open up a West Coast trip against the Dodgers. Three games. And the Reds move up to San Francisco for a pair. And down to San Diego for two more. Then to Houston for three. Today, getting a little bit of a rising here as he's walking very, very slowly back up the line. After it sprinted about halfway down to the right field corner, hoping to leg out an infield hit, which was fouled. So the little fellow's back in there. And Murray, who had to wait patiently, looks down to get his sign. Starts the windup on the one two pitch. Fastball swung on, ground ball back up the middle. And Rodney Scott can't get to it, moving to his left. D. Linnae is on for the fourth time in this ballgame. Three singles and a walk. Scott with awfully good range. Move from that shortstop position towards second, and the ball barely eluded his reach. Now let's see if Miguel will try to steal against Eddie Murray, a right-hander. He got a good jump in the fifth inning and stole against Bill Lee, who had, he had been thrown out trying to steal in the third tonight. Begged to first base, and the little fellow's back safely. He's now 13 and 4 in stolen bases in the brief time the Cubs have had him. De Jesus in the batter's box. Another throw to first. A little bit high that time. And Delaney went back in in plenty of time. Wants a little time now so he can uh, dust himself off. Pittsburgh rained out tonight and off tomorrow. They play the Mets Saturday and Sunday and then come in here to Montreal for a pair. There's a pitch and Edie Jesus tries about a fastball and misses for strike one. Delaney made no attempt to go. So far this year, Pittsburgh and Montreal against one another here at Montreal, the Expos have won three and lost four to Pittsburgh. But they have beaten the Pirates three out of five at Pittsburgh. 
As a throw to first, and again, De La Day, ball's prone, grabs that bag with the right hand. Fakes going, and Jesus tries to bunt any fouls. That pitch over in the first base side. And now, with two strikes on him, let's see what Yvonne can do about getting DeLanay into scoring position. Well, let's see if DeLanay may go on his own. We've had a lot of problems in the last couple of months of this season. Getting a man from first to second. Or getting a man out over to third base. After he is doubled to open up an inning. And it's the inability to execute plays like that that proved to be very, very costly over the long haul. Let's see what DeJesus can do now. He stepped back into the batter's box. Now looks out again. Check signs with a Malpatano. Giving him another set. Bond starting the night, hitting 375. Hit the ball sharply every time tonight and has one double. Throw to first. Tom DeLanay going in standing that time. Well, he can fly. Now Lee is ready. DeLanay doesn't go. And a swing and a bouncing ball over the pitcher's mound. Could be two. Cash picks it up, steps on second, and the Jesus, because of his good speed, is able to leg it out. Well, I guess he was trying to go to the right side. Lou just couldn't get it over there far enough. Well, with two strikes on him, he was. You know, it looked like he might go through the middle there for a base hit. Cash with Delaney on first, shortened up toward second base, and so did Scott. So yeah. it brought them closer to the bag. The Jesus with good speed at first now with the Delaney and the Jesus in the lineup. Cubs should have a one-two punch insofar as base stealing which we've lacked all year. Sure have. Well, we got it with DeLanay. We've not had it at all with Yvonne. Well, he has 19. He's been caught 20 times. The percentages are sure not good there. Zidner stepping in, and Larry tonight has a walk, two singles, and has batted in two runs, and a peg by Murray over to first base. And Jesus gets back in safely. Becky Knowles is slated to pitch for the Phillies against the Cubs tomorrow at Philadelphia, assuming we don't run into a rainstorm. Here's a fastball, and Larry takes for a strike. With two singles and a walk off Bill Lee. The Pirates screened out. Both they and the cards have an off day. September the 27th. And if necessary, it may be scheduled then. Well, one pitch. Inside delivery, and Larry, a little foul that trickles in and out of the Montreal dugout behind first base. Nothing in two counts. Might be that Mike Kruko is going to get a shot tomorrow at Philadelphia. Hasn't been able to work since taking that cortisone shot in his elbow while we were out on the West Coast a couple of weeks ago. Quick throw by Murray to first base. Yvonne was not caught napping. Billy's leading one to nothing over the Mets tonight at the end of four. And in the American League, Oakland leading at Milwaukee. They got a pair in the first inning. There's a swing, a bitter. It's a ground ball to the shortstop. Goes to second for one. Their fourth double play of the ball. Three of them, line drives. This one a ground ball, giving them 111 for the year. So it's time for the fans here to get up on their feet for their home team seventh inning stretch with the Cubs holding on to a lead of three to two. Homes, your Fleetwood Homes authorized dealer must sell all remaining 1979 models on their lot. The 1980 models will begin arriving the middle of this month, and there simply is not enough space. Prices are slashed. It's truly your chance to whip inflation. Visit soon while the selections are best at the junction of State Road 66 and US 231, three miles west of Rockport. Rio Homes, your Fleetwood Homes authorized dealer. If this land is my land, if it's America the Beautiful, why aren't we taking better care of it? Cars are filling the air with pollution. Smokestacks are filling the air with pollution. Lakes and streams are getting loaded with dirt and pollution. We've got to clean it up. 
so many mornings when I go out of the house, the air smells so bad. Is it that way in cities all across the country? Even in the country, we're getting dirt and smog. It's just not a city thing. The Lung Association asked us to say what we feel about air pollution. I guess this tells you how we feel. We'd like to do something about it, but we need everybody's help. Maybe if we all joined together in a fight against air pollution, with the Lung Association, we could clean the air. You can write for free information to your Lung Association. They'll answer. This message is brought to you as a public service by your Lung Association, who cares about every breath you take. Valentine to lead off against Rick Russell. Valentine, 0 for 2 so far tonight, and listen to this crowd open up. Russell's delivery. First pitch is a strike call. Let's pause. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WBNL and WBNL FM, Boonville, Indiana. R.H. McCain Incorporated, Old Rockport Road, are the people to see for Gibson Appliances, Armstrong Central Air, and Heating Systems. Their service is absolutely fantastic. They service what they sell. R.H. McCain Incorporated, 8970346. Two as Mick came in, caught the ball in the carpet right behind the pitcher's mouth. Here's Larry Parrish. Came into the action tonight with a nine-game hitting streak. During that time, he has hit at a 424 pace. Rick's first delivery in Parrish takes the breaking ball to Sloan outside. Ball one to him. He's lined out to center and forced Valentine. Wind up the pitch. Fastball. Missed the outside corner. Two and oh. Parrish has carried the hottest hand of all the Expos, and in this series he has get a homer in each of the first three games. 2-0 pitch, swung out, bounces a foul. Ball two, strike one. With one out of the bases empty. Montreal with five base hits, the Cubs have 12. But the Cubs have been able to get only a one-run lead. And Russell batted in that uh, go-ahead run himself. Big fellow delivers. Parrish a swing and a miss on a good breaking ball away. Two and two. Rick has struck out only two men tonight, both in the first inning. Two-two delivery. It's one off the end of the bat and fouls it down to Felipe Alou, coaching at first base, and the count stays at two and two. Dave Revering homered for Oakland tonight in the third inning with nobody on. That's his 16th homer of the year. Hit it off Travers. Oakland had been leading already 2 to nothing. 2-2 pitch. Here it is. Swung on. He gets under it. It's a high foul. Back of the plate. Blackwell coming back. Tim has no play. Rodney Scott in the on-deck circle. Minnesota has an opportunity tonight to pick up a half game on California and Kansas City. Both of whom are ahead of the Twins in that American League Western Division. California leading Kansas City by three, Minnesota by five and a half. Twins playing at Texas tonight. 2 2 pitch, swung on, bouncing ball to Kelleher's right. He's got it on a shoulder high hop, and the peg to Bittner retires Parrish. And Russell, pitching superbly, has retired. Last 10 men that he's faced. Last batter to reach was Cotter, who tripled in the fourth inning and drove in a run to tie it up at that time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I overlooked one guy, Rodney Scott, who led off the fifth inning with a single. So he's retired. Eight in a row now. And all eight on balls hit to the infield. Rodney wants to bond any man. Drank one past the pitcher. Going to be tough. Get a hurt. Makes the very pick pickup and throws the ball. It's rolling into the dugout. That's Scott. Got it lined up at second base. With his blinding speed as soon as he got that ball on that carpet past Russell. 
He just knew that there was no way Kelleher was going to be able to get him. But he made a valiant try. Shoveled the ball barehanded. Unfortunately, it wound up an air run. Bunt single. And he's on at second base. The air against Kelleher. He makes things happen. And now Dick Williams is going to go to his bench. Tommy Hutton is going to pinch hit. He is hitting 306 as a pinch hitter. 306. 11 hits coming off the bench pole, including a homer, and Hutton has batted in seven runs. Veteran left-hander. Look at second by Rick and Hutton. Takes a strike. Just about at the knees. Bill Atkinson, who was up and throwing earlier, has gotten up in the Montreal bullpen again. Tying run at second. There's a pitch and a swing and a ground ball down to Larry Bittner. He's got it easily. Comes up the line. Hutton is out on an unassisted ground ball to Larry Bittner. And Rodney Scott is left stranded again. So we move to the eighth inning at Olympic Stadium. And the Cubs are still leading 3-2. to two. This is Jerry Black asking you to please become involved in Big Brothers and Big Sisters. There are now 100 children waiting for someone like you. I found out that I could not change the world, but I'm now making the world a little better for one little guy. We are growing and learning together, and I'll let you know, friend, I now have a good start on changing the future because my little brother is part of that future. Please call me at 425-6076. That's 425-6076. Thank you. two savings programs at Del City Federal Savings and Loan that make savings and checking accounts more profitable for you. For long-term savers, Del City Federal now pays interest quarterly instead of semi-annually. That means higher interest because they're compounded four times instead of twice. For people with big checking accounts that don't earn interest, consider Del City Federal's Dido Passbook Program. Del City Federal pays interest on your cash even if it's deposited for only a few days. Both programs keep your money available and working for you. Visit any of three convenient tri-state locations of Tell City Federal Savings and Loan in Rockport, Canelton, or in Tell City. New pitcher, stocky right-hander, young Bill Atkinson, 24 years of age, soon to turn 25. At Denver this year, he was 9-6 and six, with an earned run average of just over 4. He comes from the same hometown here in Canada that produced Fergie Jenkins, Chatham, Ontario. Kingman, a single and a double, and sandwiched in between a line drive caught by the center fielder, steps in. Atkinson's first pitch, breaking ball, and he takes it outside. Ball one. The Expos signed Atkinson as a free agent in October of 78, of 71, I mean, almost eight years ago. Right-hander fires. Big swing by Kingman, and he bounces a foul over to the third base side, rolling over to the end of the cup dugout. Atkinson is married, still makes his home over at Chatham, Ontario. Not very tall, about 5'8". Delivers, Kingman checks his swing, and that's a ball too low. 2-1 on Dave. Born October 4th, 1954. Nobody on, nobody out. Cubs leading 3-2 to two in the 8th. Atkinson's pitch. Swung out of this. Good breaking ball. 
They brought him up from Denver. Been in two games. Has one save and one win. In four innings. Hasn't given up a hit yet. Struck out two. Walked one. 2-2 two, two delivery. Curve into the dirt. Check swing by Kingman, but not in time. He committed himself. That's how explosive that curveball was. And very, very rarely this year have we seen Dave fooled so badly by one. One out in the eighth, and here's out of Harris. 0 for 3 so far tonight. Hitting 293 for the year now. Swings in the first pitch of fastball. Fouls it back out of play. Cleveland and Detroit rained out tonight. And the Pittsburgh Pirates rained out against the Cardinals. 0-1 did it. That's the ball. It's a little bit low. 1-1 now. Russell has gone all the way and allowed six hits. They bunched three of them in the fourth inning. Atkinson misses low with that one to Steve. Ball two, strike one. Right hander delivers out of air, swings, and he pulls a sharp ground ball. Davy Cash to his left, he's got it. Takes a couple of steps, pegs over to Perez, and he's got it. He was playing him way over the hook in the hole. Otherwise, Lou, he never would have gotten no. to that one. He played him perfectly, and that's the veteran out there, Cash. Jerry Martin stepping in against Bill Lee. Martin singled, grounded out, and then he let off the sixth inning by drawing a walk on four pitches and scored. Came in on Rick Russell's single off the pitcher. I mean, literally off him. Rick had a really gun hard to leg it out as it caromed over to Cash through the first base, but not in time. That gave Rick his fourth run batted in this year. Martin takes, and the right-hander's first pitch to him is in for a strike. There's a curve, a little bit low, 2-0. If the Cubs can hold on to finally beat this ball club after losing seven in a row to them this year, they would not Montreal a full game behind the Pirates in the Eastern Division. Curve high and inside, 2-1 and one on Jerry. Percentage-wise, Montreal at this moment leads the Pirates. Their percentage, 604-3. The Pirates, 604-1. Two out, two one pitch. Fastball. Swung on and missed. Looks like he took his head off that one. That American League, Western Division... California and Kansas City idle tonight. 2 2 pitch checks his way. Did he hold up in time? Breaking ball down and away. He did. It's 3 and 2 on him. California, being off today, will be up at Milwaukee for the weekend, then has four games at Kansas City. And while the Angels are at Milwaukee, Kansas City will be hosting Seattle. Two up. Waiting for Jerry to get back in. They also meet one another later on this month for three games. There's a swing and a drive into left field. Crow Marty coming on. He is there. Warren grabs it. Martin lines out to left field in the eighth, and the Cubs have gone down one, two, three. Russell out to the hill. Cubs leading three to two. A public service message on behalf of the U.S. Olympic Committee. In some countries, the clash of fencing swords is as familiar as the smashing of shoulder pads is to us. When we get together with those countries in 1980 for the Olympic Games, however, none of the events will be football. Instead, Americans will be competing in fencing and other sports that are comparatively unfamiliar. And serious training requires money. Support our athletes through Olympic Dovermass 02030. That's Olympic Dovermass 02030. Without your help, we can't afford to win. National Bank, with four convenient locations in Warwick County, is just a short drive from wherever you are. Warwick National, in their brand new location, downtown Boonville, Warwick National's Colonial Branch in Newburgh, Warwick National in Newburgh, and Warwick National, Tennyson, Indiana. 
Complete banking for you and your family. A full-service bank. Checking accounts, savings accounts, certificates of deposit, whether it's a Christmas club, cashier's checks, installment loan, home improvement loans. Come on in. They offer many services for you and your family at Warwick National with four convenient Warwick County locations. Warwick National Bank, Warwick County's leading banking institution. Make it your bank. to lead off against Rick Russell. Top of the batting order for the Montreal Expos. Rick delivers. Romarty takes the first pitch for a strike. Bruce Sitter warming up in the Cub bullpen along with Doug Capilla, left hander. Romarty takes in there as a strike at the knees. Marty singled his first time up tonight. Since then, it's bounced out twice. Russell, a very determined-looking guy on that hill, gets assigned to wind up in Cromarty. Swings and lets a high fly ball. Deal and A. Back into his right. He's got time. He's there. Little guy makes the catch, and Cromarty is out. That'll bring up Davy Cash. Double leading off the fourth inning. He's one for three tonight. Scored when Dawson followed up his double with one of his own. And then Dawson came in on Carter's triple. They got three of their base hits tonight in that inning. The fourth. Other than that, they have three singles. There's a swing and a fly ball. Right field, back forward. Gary Martin. And he grabs it in front of the warning track. Deep down the right field line. Two very deep fly balls. the opposite side. And Cromarty, the left-hander, hit his into deep left-center field. Now Dawson, the third man of the batting order. One for three tonight. Drove in his 84th run of the year. Dawson with 22 homers for the season, hitting 275. Russell's pitch. Right-hander takes the ball, low and outside. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here with you. We'll be at Philadelphia tomorrow night, Saturday evening, and Sunday afternoon. 1-0 pitch. Tried to hold up any swing. Couldn't do it. Went too far. 1-1. And the Cubs nursing a 3-2 lead. And the Pirates hoping they hang on to it. Out of Harris deep guarding the line. He swings. Hits one off the end of the bat and fouls it over to the first base side. Ball one, strike two. By the way... Well, we'll be playing the Phillies Saturday night, Saturday afternoon. And our originating station, Chicago, WGN, Bill Bird, Mike Pyle will be up at Ann Arbor, Michigan to bring you the Notre Dame-Michigan football game starting five minutes after two, Saturday afternoon. Fighting Irish and the Wolverines. One-two pitch. Swung on a breaking ball, and he fouls it over to the third base side. We'll not have any football on the following week. We'll still be involved with baseball. The week after that, we'll be at Pittsburgh to end the baseball season. Then we'll be picking up our Big Ten Game of the Week football broadcast every Saturday throughout the Big Ten season. One-two pitch. Swung out and a little foul ball. It's going to go into the seats back at first base. Still one and two as Dawson is making Russell work here. They get the third out in the eighth inning. There are no patsies in this Montreal lineup. Russell's fastball hits the bat and comes over the first base side. Russell gets it in fair territory. Walks on down, steps in the bag at first base. On a check swing, a ball off the bat of Dawson. And Russell, breaking swiftly off that mound, gathered it in in fair territory. They go down in order, and the Cubs come to bat 
At the end of eight innings of play, leading the Expos three to two. My name is Bruce Kraft. My life was in ruins for many years with a compulsive problem. Then I found myself at the Salvation Army Center. Now, three years later, I've been able to marry very happily and own my own business, as well as my home. No wonder I support the Salvation Army. Won't you, too? Countless people have overcome many complex problems at Salvation Army Centers. Your usable discards can be turned into financial support. Call for the Salvation Army Red Shield Truck. something called Dido that should interest most local businessmen. Dido is from Tell City Federal Savings and Loan. Many businesses, like individuals, keep extra cash in a checking account because it may be needed in just a few short days. That's idle money that does not earn interest. Tell City Federal's Dido Passbook Program pays interest even if your money is deposited for just a few days. Deposit on Monday, take out on Friday, and you'll earn four days interest. Use Dido for your extra cash. Tell City Federal will pay you Dido interest and make your idle cash pay Dodo. Tell City Federal Savings and Loan Association in Brockport, Canelton, and in Tell City. Stadium, Tim Blackwell, batting left-handed against Murray, is going to be leaving off the ninth inning. He'll be followed by Callaher and Russell. The last time the Cubs beat this ball club this year was back at Rigby Field, July the 5th. And Rick Russell was the winning pitcher in a 3-1 to one ball game. First pitch to Tim, and he takes a strike. Atkinson, a right-hander. Curve misses inside, 1-1. One one. Yankees leading Boston. 7 to 3 at Fenway Park in the seventh inning. One one delivery. Fastball low it inside, two and one. And the Baltimore Orioles going after their 95th win of the season. Carry a 10 to 2 lead at the end of eight innings of play at Toronto tonight. Two one pitch. Fastball high and away. Three and one. The Orioles did not score in the top of the ninth inning. Toronto coming to bat against Flanagan, who's going after his 22nd win of the season for the Orioles. Blackwell swings on three and one, pulls a ground ball to Perez. Atkinson off the mound. Pitcher takes the peg, one away. Yeah, he might take that one, Lou. Well, I thought he would, too. Uh, then to try to get on base with yeah. Kelleher coming up. Twins in Texas at the end of five are tied one to one. Twins needing a victory to pick up a half game on both Kansas City and California. There's a swing by Mick and a fly ball down the right field line. Caught barely inside the line by the right fielder Valentine. Mick going after the first pitch and they're two out in the top of the night. Here's Rick who singled in the sixth inning and drove in Jerry Martin with the go-ahead run and he has held on to that lead ever since Tigers and Cleveland postponed the White Sox idle Yankees from Boston now in the 8th inning Rick swings at the first one lets a drive down the left field line and it's going down into the corner for extra bases he is going to be on with a stand-up double wow He has hit the ball hard every time up tonight. I get the feeling that Mr. Russell wants this game very, very badly, Lou. He's done everything. He sure has. Position, pitched well. Even wanted to steal a base. Dylan A. stepping in. This little fellow tonight in a starting role has three singles, a walk, and a score to run. 
facing Atkinson. Who delivers from the stretch in a strike call by Miguel. Atlanta today defeated San Francisco. They had another very small crowd out at Candlestick Park. A little less than 2,000 paid. Pittsburgh and the Cardinals rained out tonight at Pittsburgh. Philadelphia at the end of six leads the New York Mets one to nothing. Carlton going after a shutout. Delaney takes an air as a strike. Nothing in two. Houston and Cincinnati flying out to the coast tonight. 0-2 delivery. Takes a curve low. One and two. Cubs batting in the ninth. They have 13 hits and lead three to two. And four Montreal double plays. There's a swing, and he pulls one down the first baseline foul. It'll be Fan Appreciation Day on Sunday, September 23rd, and the Pirates will be in Chicago for their final game of the 1979 season. And the day before that, Saturday the 22nd, will be Fan or will be a day when they give away 15,000 of Dave Kingman T-shirts, none of which has been worn. All sparkling clean with a caricature of Dave on the front. There's a swing by Delaney. Hits it down to Perez. Tony grabs it. Wins the race to the bag. The Cubs are retired in the top of the ninth. Now hold on. We're going into the bottom of the ninth inning at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. And the Cubs are leading 3-2. to two. Homes, your Fleetwood Homes authorized dealer must sell all remaining 1979 models on their lot. The 1980 models will begin arriving the middle of this month, and there simply is not enough space. Prices are slashed. It's truly your chance to whip inflation. Visit soon while the selections are best at the junction of State Road 66 and U.S. 231, three miles west of Rockport. Rio Homes, your Fleetwood Homes authorized dealer. Hey, Mom and Pop, babysitters, too. Here's life-saving advice for you. North or west or east or south, kids like to put things in their mouth. Buttons and bows, pins and bacon, anything that's trouble-making, things that stick or stab or scrape, and leave kids breathing in bad shape. So that is why this song is sung, to help protect the infant lung. Infants should not be left alone. Their play area should be clear of any little toy or object they can put in their mouth. Guard against peanuts, hard beans, or hard candy. They can be aspired and stick in the throat or even be trapped in the lungs. The best protection for young lungs is the care you take to keep all swallow-type objects out of their way. For more information about lung protection, write to your local lung association. They bring this message as a public service because they care about every breath you take. fourth inning. Back-to-back doubles, a ground out and a triple. And since then, he has yielded a lead-off single in the fifth inning and a two-out bunt single in the seventh, both by the same man, Rodney Scott and Tony Perez. One last night's game of these bat for him. Just got his unassisted putt out on DeLanay to retire the Cubs from the top of the inning. He is leading off. a good play by Bittner and grounded out to DeJesus. First pitch. Tony takes the ball low and outside. Out of airs, guards the line and very deep at third. Bittner guards the line and deep at first base. Crowd opening it up. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swung on and a high fly ball. Dave Kingman coming in. Should have no trouble. He's there and he's got it for out number one of the night. And before Gary Carter stepped in, let's pause for station identification. This is the WBML, Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WBML and WBML-FM, Boonville, Indiana.
Call 897-0346, R.H. McCain Incorporated, Old Rockport Road, for Gibson Appliances, Armstrong Central Air and Heat Systems. They service what they sell. R.H. McCain Incorporated, Old Rockport Road. Then was out at the plate trying to score on Valentine's ground ball to Bittner. But he drove in a run with that triple. Hitting 272, Russell's first pitch. Fastball for a strike right at the knees. Good sinker. Russell went all the way Sunday to defeat the Phillies, allowed them two runs. Now tonight, he's two outs away from his 18th one of the year. The big fellow's next pitch of the ball, low and inside to Gary Carter. Last cup victory over this ball club at Wrigley Field, July the 5th, and Russell, the winning pitcher. One out, bases empty, three to two Cubs. Got too much on that fastball and missed low it outside. Ball two, strike one, Kid Row. Now throwing in the Cub bullpen, along with Suter. Ball two, strike one, here it is. Carter swings, hammers the base hit into left field. Kamen coming over to cut it off. Carter represents the tying run. He is on at first with a one out single. With two strikeouts tonight in the first inning, he has not yet walked anybody. He now faces Ellis Valentine. Go for three so far. Just under 20,000 paid, 19,908 paid attendance. Valentine at 279, average for the season right up to the moment. The pitch takes a strike, a good fastball to this big right-hander. Ellis with 21 home runs. Russell, a very determined guy tonight. Strike one pitch, he was bailing away, and he takes a strike over the outside corner, and he's growling at Fred Brocklander, the plate umpire. Rick had him bailing out on that one. Nothing in two. Out of Harris, of course, still deep at third. Inside the line. Fittner has to hold Perez out at first base. A strike two count. He may try to go to the right side. Russell into the stretch. 0-2 delivery. And he takes the ball. It's outside. Ball one, strike two. Breaking two. The Cubs with 13 hits. Two of them by Russell, who has batted in one of the three Cub runs that gave him the lead back in the sixth inning. Unlocked a 2-2 tie. Rick is ready. One out, one on, one-two pitch. Swung on and a base hit. Dropping quickly into left center field. Carter on the third. DeLaney throws it on the run. Off target and out it. Holy macro Valentine goes to second base. A big, big mistake by Miguel DeLaney. There was no way he was going to get Carter. And on the run, he lobbed a bad throw towards third, which permitted Valentine to easily go to second base. And he represents the winning run. That's not thinking. prior to when they happened. That's just going through the motion. In fact, he tried to throw to third base on the run. Thank you. 
All race drivers understand the safety provided by seat belts and buckle up for safety. The same safety is available to you motorists. Safety officials say if every motorist would buckle up, over 12,000 lives could be saved each year in traffic accidents. Don't lose your head. Buckle up for safety. <laughs> from behind are threatening to do it here in the ninth inning tonight. Now we are going to get a change defensively. Scott Thompson is going to replace Steele and Abe in center field. go from first to third on that hit because Miguel does not have a good arm. Oh, I wish he'd fired that ball into second. Parrish is going to be put on intentionally here to load up the bases. Set up a force play at the plate or perhaps a double play. Think back, Lou, to the double plays, the opportunities we had again tonight to put this game away and could not do it. And here we are in a big, big batch of trouble. It's been a tough scoring run for the Cubs for the last three or four weeks. It was a shame that Lee lasted more than two innings, but he did. We should have had five or six runs in. But we haven't, so we got to get the defense working right now. So it's going to be very tough to double up. It is Rodney Scott in the batter's box. Eric Carter, the front of his uniform, all muddied up from that hit first slide going from first to third. Tying run. Cubs aren't going to take any chances of double plays. Now they're going to try to force them in at the plate. Boy, that can be tough. Here's the pitch that Rodney takes, and it's a ball rolling inside. Through the split fingered fastball and miss with it. Rodney adept at going the opposite side. Here's the pitch. He's going to take, and it's a strike. He was taking all the way. It was a fastball. Ball one, strike one. Suter desperately needing his 36th save of the year. Bail out. Good pal, Rick Russell. One out, bases jammed, one one pitch, a swing and a miss. Rodney went all the way around trying to give it a ride. Rusty Stab in the on deck circle. Gapinchia. The game on the line to the bases jam. Three to two Cubs in the ninth. One out. Here it is. Scott. Swings, ground ball, left side. Bases has it. Cubs to the plate. Got him. Oh, Yvonne really uh, re uh, reacted beautifully that time. Infield in on that carpet. I think he was anticipating Lou Scott trying to go that yes, side. Well, Scott did before with his yes. single over his head. And Yvonne, great reaction. Moved like a cat to his right and fired perfectly to Tim Blackwell for the force out at the plate of Gary Carter. Twice tonight has 
then out of the plate. Bases remain loaded, and Rusty Staub will be the pinch hitter. It's coming over here from the Tigers. It's a pinch batter, Staub, one for ten. And two runs batted in. Hold on. I think this is the first time Staub has faced Tudor. There's a swing, bopping ball. Bop. about it for a long while. And it winds up four runs, nine hits, no errors, six men left for the Expos. The Cubs, three runs, 13 hits, one error, seven men left on. And Bill Atkinson, who came on in relief and worked the last two innings, gave up one hit, a double to Russell, picks up the victory. And Russell is going to be charged with one of the toughest losses this or any other season. He left with two men on and one out. Then Suter walked Parrish intentionally. Then he got Rodney Scott to hit into a force play at the plate. And then Rusty Staub hitting that bouncing ball. And I don't know whether it hit a seam in the carpet, the edge of the carpet or what, but it took an awfully high hop off the glove of Bittner. And the trying and winning runs come across the plate. And while Suter put that man on with the intentional walk I guess because he inherited two men on base when he came on that they're going to charge uh, yeah they're going to they're going to charge the two runs against Rick yeah the four so he stops, winds up uh, with one of the toughest losses of this or any other season or I tell you I'm still in a state of shock Lou well, I don't I know really that that ball taken and it came off of the carpet went onto the dirt once again it just went over Bittner's head he got the glove up but then just touched the ball and went beyond him I'm telling you uh, in this series Montreal has gotten every break in the book I don't care it's, it's not an alibi it just happened that's all and that's why they're winning and that's why they have the spirit here and that's why it's going to be between 
this series with Pittsburgh and Montreal, in my opinion. Well, maybe this is their year. I'm thinking back to the 1969 season when the Fledgling Mets came roaring along in August and September and knocked the Cubs out and went on to win it and went on from there to win the... They knocked off the Atlanta Braves in the division championship and then, as I recall, defeated the, the Baltimore Orioles. No. Maybe we're wrong there. But they won the World Series that year. And now Montreal just refusing to give up. Here at home, they've won 12 in a row. And for the season at home, they've won 53 games and lost only 19. But a heartbreaking loss, to say the least. Just when it looked like the Cubs might win it, disaster struck off the bat of Rusty Stop. Johnny Stubbs, our engineer, who came this year at Montreal, and we thank him for his superb work with us. Jack Minovich, our producer. And Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau, thanking you very much for being with us. Like you, tough, tough loss to take. But the Montreal Expos did it. Their 85th win. They are now 30 games over the 500 mark. And in first place in the Eastern Division over the Pittsburgh Pirates, who were rained out at home tonight against the Cardinals. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. More sports, more obvious. WGN.